Good day, everyone. I'm Frank Malicote. I'm a news anchor and a reporter here in the San Francisco Bay Area for Fox. My guest is James Pierpera. He is a personal lifestyle expert and coach, filmmaker. He's an author, and he's here to talk about some of the angst and the anxiety people are feeling during this uh, very difficult time. James, good morning. Good morning. You, you forgot my two favorite titles, which are husband and father. So. Oh, yeah. Well, probably yeah. the two most important titles you have there as well. That's right. Uh, well, off camera, we've been talking about your journey. It's an incredible, uh, incredible ride from, uh, from bad to great. We'll get to that in a moment. But first, give our viewers kind of an overview of who you are and what you do. So, you know, my, my life started off in a pretty traumatic way. I had a really traumatic kindergarten experience. You know, I, on the first day, I was supposed to go into the special ed class because they discovered I had some learning disabilities. My teacher called me up from the front of the room and she said, you know that only retarded and stupid kids go to special ed. And I was shocked, but then she made the entire class call me stupid on the way out the door. Um, my mom was, you know, had some mental illness and she wasn't really capable of handling it. So that happened every day for the first year of school. And, you know, what I like to say is everybody's on a path to somewhere. And that path led me to a very dark place eventually, and I ended up on drugs. And as a way to support my habit, I started, you know, passing bad checks and things like that. And I eventually ended up in jail. As a matter of fact, it was solitary confinement because I had escaped a police officer's custody. And I was in there for 15 months all alone with the person I didn't want to be with the most, who was me. Mm. Um, and we, we talked about it too. And while you were in there, you were able to um, figure out the only person that put you in there was yourself. Is that true? Well, it is true. And here's why is because, you know, I used to, right after I got in there, I got a letter from my dad. It was like, don't let this time go to waste, you know, take advantage of it. So I started reading and doing some things and I started praying and meditating myself. And one day I used to write these long lists of people I felt like had harmed me so I could offer them forgiveness. One day I looked down at this list of people and I thought, you know, the only common denominator between all of those situations is me. What if I somehow created all of this? And, you know, I'd never even considered the fact that I might be the creator of my experiences before that point. But I thought what it meant if I was and what I wasn't. If I wasn't, that meant the world really was a terrible place because bad things had happened to me. And I probably didn't want to play anymore. But if I was, and I could figure out how we created our lives, then I could create something new and different in its place. And that's where my journey started with the question, how does somebody go about consciously creating their life? And uh, I guess you could say no more crippling self-doubt too. If, uh, if you think it and you say it and it's not great, you're probably going to live it, right? You need to change the way you think and your behavior so you can move on to something else. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And so my wife and I did a lot of research as, as we grew into, you know, this life that we built for, for ourselves. And we came to understand that there's two concepts that dictate your entire life experience. The first one is perception, it dictates everything that you are, everything that you see, everything that you feel, everything you experience. And the second one is your emotions. And your emotions give your life meaning, and they're actually a feedback mechanism for what you believe. And so, you know, we like to think that we don't have any insights into how we create our existence, but that's actually not true. These two things dictate that. Yet most people don't seem to understand how they work. And so my wife and I became experts in those. And so after that experience in the jail cell, I had to ask myself one more question. What was it that created my experience? Did my abuse define me, you know, in my childhood abuse? And I thought to myself, well, has everybody who's ever had abuse allowed it to destroy them? And the answer was no. So it couldn't have been the abuse, which is good news, because if it was abuse, I'm stuck forever because I can't go back and change that. Right. So what was it that defined me? And so what I discovered was what I chose to believe about myself having lived through that abuse, right? Because of that abuse, I chose to believe I was stupid. I chose to believe that I was dumb. I chose to believe that I was not good enough mm -hmm. and that I was never going to measure up. And those are the beliefs that created everything that happened after that point. And so the idea is that, you know, sometimes people go, don't do that. Don't blame yourself. And I'm like, don't take my power away. Because it was that ownership that I actually was in control 
that made me feel like I could create something new and different. So that's where we started was this idea that we, we might not be able to control what happens to us, but we can control what it means about us. And so I went back into those old experiences and I started shifting and changing who I thought I was, how I related to the world, and that changed everything. How do you do that though? I mean, if some of this stuff is just ingrained in your DNA, especially what your mother said to you when you were five or six years old. I mean, it, it's tough. Well, it is tough. The first thing you have to realize is that it is your choice, right? You have the opportunity to choose again. And so we have actually developed something called the emotional integration technique. And basically what that is, it's a technique that we developed that allows you to go into past experiences and imprint new emotions. So the next time your mind grabs that experience to dictate, you know, your future experiences, it will come with a different emotional response. Wow. And this is what it's based in is most people don't understand that although memories are stored in your mind, emotions are actually stored in your body. And so when you get upset and you feel it in your stomach, or your heart, those are unprocessed emotions from your past that need to be processed. They need to be felt. They need to be dealt with. Mm. And so fear is kind of like a guard like that. It's like when, when you experience trauma, you adopt fear in your childhood because you don't have the mental or physical capacity to defend yourself. Mm. So that fear becomes this emotion that's trapped in your system waiting to be expressed. You know, it's like people all the time go, well, how can I get mad for no reason? And it's not that it's not for no reason. It's because the way your perception works, it's kind of like a Google search. And it's always going into the past to find a, a situation that's like your current situation to place meaning on it. Well, whatever situation that is has an emotion already tied to it. So, you know, you, you're in a situation, you get really upset and you're like, why am I so mad? This isn't a big deal. And that's why is because the old emotion is unprocessed. So you actually have the ability to follow your emotions as a guide and understand why the things that upset you upset you, to be able to follow those back to past memories to process the emotion that's caught in your system. Wow, that's fascinating. And uh, put in layman's terms, because I've heard it before, but that uh, very succinct. Let's turn this around and bring it back to the coronavirus and what we're going through right, right now, James. Uh, I imagine some children, um, I know adults as well are feeling a lot of angst and a lot of anxiety. And uh, maybe it's not playing out now, but it might, like you said, in years to come. What advice would you give uh, these people that are feeling that way? Well, the first thing they need to understand is they need to take it easy on themselves. You know, because I like to say people, you know, people have never made a bad decision because they're only ever making decisions with bad information. And so the other thing that you have to realize is that once you drop into a certain level of fear, that you go into an automatic response, right? And so you don't really have control over what you're going to do next because in order to escape the fear that we're feeling in our body, we set up patterns of behavior like addiction, like anger, like different things as a response to escape what we're feeling, right? Mm -hmm. And those patterns of behavior run unless you learn to interrupt them. And so I know there's a lot of people out there doing things like buying too much toilet paper or, you know, doing things irrational. There's people, I was just reading an article that, you know, domestic violence is way up, child abuse is way up. And it's because essentially all of us have fear inside of us. And when the society is thrown into massive fear, it just throws us over our like capacity for it. Mm -hmm. And we drop into these survival mechanisms, right? Which are tied to these patterns and behaviors. So the real key for people is, listen, take a step back and, and know that you're running a pattern, right? And understand that this pattern is causing you more pain and you're acting in a way that you don't want to act and that you have to interrupt the pattern early in order to move into a higher state of awareness. Because here's the last piece that people don't understand. When you fall into fear, you actually lose connection with the rational, logical part of your brain. You're only in your part of your brain that deals with survival. So everything is being weighed against life and death. And so you have to be able to create some mechanisms to shift your body out of fear, the physiology of fear, to get into a higher state of awareness. What about, uh, and I've done this before in my life, where you know you're doing something you're not supposed to do, but you do it anyway. Where we all do, right? 
Yeah. So that's I, exactly what happens. So let me, yeah, I'll explain that because that's exactly the perfect question. What happens is that you have an idea or perception of fear. Something comes along and it triggers fear inside of you, mm -hmm. right? And so the body joins in and that's where anxiety comes from. So the body, based on our evolution, is designed to move away from things that cause you pain because pain equals death. Even though it doesn't anymore, it's still in your system, it does. Right. And so we set up these patterns to do this. But here's what's really important, is we know we don't want to do them, right? And so when you have the perception of fear and your body jumps in and gets into massive anxiety, right? Before you're going to run out that action or behavior, there's always a pause, right? And if you, you'll recognize it because what happens is, is that you know that you're getting ready to engage in behavior that's contradicti contradictory to what you want in your conscious mind. And then you do it anyway. Mm. But the pause is the opportunity to walk down the physiology or the anxiety and be able to deal with the fear rationally. You do it once, but how do you make it part of your life where you walk away? So there's, there, there's tools and techniques that help you do it. Mm -hmm. So essentially what happens is that when the, when the perception comes up and the physiology joins it, and the pause happens before you go out into the, new, the pattern of behavior or addiction, that pause is your opportunity to walk down the physiology. Now, I said earlier that your, your mind actually loses connection with the part of your brain that's rational. So there is a signal that your body sends your mind to take back control. And I want you to think about it in ancient times. If you were running from a predator, was, what was the first thing you had to do when you stopped? It was you had to catch your breath. So deep heart-based breathing is actually what signals your brain that you are now safe and it moves you up into a higher state of consciousness. This is why meditation is so effective. Sure. People don't do it because they're like, it's so hard to clear my mind. The benefits of meditation don't come from clearing your mind, it comes from the breath work. Yeah. And so essentially, and the, I'm gonna answer your question now, it's like physiology comes up, then the perception or the anxiety comes up or vice versa, and you start to run the pattern. But what you have to do is recognize the pause. And your mind and system will always move you towards the least amount of pain. What you will realize is if you pay attention to these patterns, that the pain that you're avoiding from feeling what you're feeling is now being outweighed by the pain that you're creating by running the pattern. And as soon as you map that and watch it a few times, this becomes too costly, right? Wow. Sure. And that's what causes the willingness to take a deep breath. So anytime that you're feeling anxiety coming up, up in you, yeah. at the earliest possible moment, all you have to do is start breathing deeply all the way down and force air in, and then you'll move into a higher state of awareness. I do yoga, and I must admit, sometimes uh, I'll be in there and my mind is on anything but what the teacher's doing, Bikram yoga, the hot yoga. But by the end of the... Uh, the 90 minutes, I leave there like I've been on an outward bound experience where, you know, I just feel refreshed. And uh, yeah, there's a lot Absolutely. to be said. To... Go ahead. Sorry. That's because there's automated parts of your brain, right? And then there's voluntary parts of your brain. So anytime you're in any level of a fear response, it kind of goes, it's like fight or flight, right? Protect. And then the next one is confirm. Right. Confirm is, you know, confirmation bias. You're always looking for things to confirm. Those are all safety mechanisms. When you're able to breathe deeply, pull yourself out of the physiology of any level of fear, you move into a higher state of consciousness. And that's what happens during the yoga is that your, your, your body is signaling to your mind that it's okay and that you're safe and it's okay to move into a more creative voluntary state. Well, fascinating stuff, and uh, this is terrific. Let's talk about routine if we can, because uh, I'm a, a creature of a routine. I like to get up. I, I like to have my breakfast. I go to work at a certain time. I come home. I like to work out. Um, and, uh, and the routine now for a lot of people has been just thrown to the wind because of uh, staying at home, not going to work, working from home, uh, uh, suddenly becoming a babysitter for the kids. Uh, why are human beings so, uh, why, why does that interrupt our lives so much? 
Well, it interrupts our lives because the routine in the routine is safety and security, right? Mm -hmm. And our fundamental, that's our fundamental thing is survival. So, you know, we set up these routines as a way of everything is right in the world. You know, I feel good. And so sometimes it's okay to interrupt these routines as long as you understand what they're doing for you, right? And, you know, what I like to tell people is that you need to adopt one new thing in your routine, right? And it's like, what is it? You know, like 70 or 80% of the most successful people in the world do one thing every day. They meditate. It's like, why don't, why don't the rest of us do it? Because it's hard, right? So here's what the successful people don't even realize is this, is the reason that they're successful to a certain degree is because they've taken control of their physiology, right? So you can imagine if you're triggered, it's a lot easier to go from 50% triggered to 100% triggered than it is from walking out of that yoga class from zero to 25. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So when you take control of your physiology on a regular basis, and you move yourself into a state of homeostasis, into a state of creativity, that becomes a pattern in your brain that you can get to fairly easily from that point forward. And so if your routine's been broken, let's start a new one. Start, and you don't have to clear your mind. It's just about the deep breathing exercises. Yeah. Uh, finally, just one last piece of advice for people out there. Uh, I mean, we're all, you know, no one's gone through this before in our lifetime. Uh, anxiety aside, what, what would you like to say to folks out there? So here's what I would say to folks is, is that, you know, we are not looking at the situation rationally. The vast majority of people listening to my voice do not have a fear of dying from the coronavirus. And the question is, is why are we all scared? Right. And that's that's really the key is that you need to move into the rational part of your brain so that you can look at this situation for what it is, not what your fear tells you it is, because you have to be able to take control of your systems. And I like to kind of compare it to moving out of your body into your mind, out of fear, into love or creativity, however you want to explain it. But that's the real key is becoming aware that you are actually in control of how you respond. And for those, including myself, sometimes I have trouble turning my head off at night. I think about work uh, um, and my routine has changed. I'm reporting from home now. Am I going to get this all correct? Uh, and there's a lot of folks going through that. Uh, talk about that. If you can. Just well, turning I, that I, mind off so you can, is it back to breathing? It probably is. So, well, I mean, it is back to breathing. It absolutely is. But you know, what you also have to ask yourself is you got to be able to examine the things that you're thinking about. And so a really helpful tool is to move into the observer role and go, why am I worrying about this? Right. And so there is a question and here's the question I ask myself. It's like, when I see my mind spinning and it starts to you know, spin out of control, you take some deep breaths, you think about the thing you were worrying about. You ask yourself this question, is there anything for me to do right now about this? And if the answer is no, then you let it go, right? Because we're worrying about things in the future, but we don't have any power to impact those things. So that's kind of the combination. You know, walk down the physiology, take a deep breath, ask yourself, is there anything that I need to do right now to address this situation? If the answer is no, let it go. And when you, when you make that a pattern, it changes your life forever. Wow, some, uh, some great information, James. I want to thank you so much. That's James uh, Pupora. Um, if you want to plug a, a book, yeah, I know you got a documentary. Do. Do. Please do. You go right ahead because uh, so, listen, I'm, gonna, guys, I'm buying. <laughs> we have a ton of resources for you right now. A ton of them are free. So we have a movie. It's called Perception, Seeing Not Believing. Mm -hmm. we are, we've made it free for everybody because they're at home. They're stressed. This movie will help shift and change your life. It's on our website, powerful-theletteru.com. It's also on our Facebook page. We have a book of the same title. You know, anybody's listening, I'll send you the book for the cost of shipping right now. We want to do things for free. We actually have a listening program with our partners at Advanced Brain Technologies. If you can't do all this stuff that I was talking about, they're offering their listening program for free for the next 60 days. And it's just, if you have a pair of headphones, this music will walk back your physiology with very little input because it shapes and trains your brain makes it more resilient. It's been doing it for 20 years. Uh, you know, we have a content universe. 
We have every resource that you need in one spot to help move you out of pain and anxiety into a state of peace, love, and clarity. And so it's powerful dash the letter u.com. Oh, one more thing. Sure. We're actually, all of our coaches and mentors are going to be do, doing free coaching starting this week on Facebook live for anybody who needs it. These are coaches who charge $100 an hour, $500 an hour. They're just going to start doing it live to not only help you, but help everybody who's listening who might be dealing with your same issues. Uh, and what face, where do they go for that on Facebook? So it's just the powerful, the powerful letter U Facebook. So it's the, right the powerful letter U. Well, I'm a believer. I so enjoy chatting with you, uh, James. And, oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Frank, let's get a cup of coffee next time I'm in the I, barrier. I would enjoy that. I would enjoy that. Um, awesome. Well, all the best and uh, stay safe. You too. Is, have a great day. All right. I'm Frank Malicote here with Fox in the Bay Area. And now back to you.